Let's talk about the most recent chapter of JJK, 261. But if you're not caught up, obviously spoilers. All right, so the reaction to this chapter, and specifically this, has been crazy, right? Which is to be expected. After the cliffhanger in 260, no matter which direction that reveal went, people were going to be feeling some type of way. And I think that's great, right? That is the beauty of art. Everyone experiences it in a subjective manner and has their own opinions, analysis, and interpretations. And that's fine. I just want to provide my reaction to help maybe some people who are still torn on this, don't understand where it was coming from. Um, just give my two cents and see if that, you know, helps how you're feeling. Because I know a lot of people are very torn about this. Now, me personally, I really like it. I think Gege is cooking here. Just the way we are seeing some of these characters develop um, entrenched in deeper themes that have been present throughout all of JJK has me really excited. But the first thing I want to talk about is the whole Gojo angle. As I'm sure many of you know me to be a card-carrying member of the Gojo is coming back theory. And to be fair, he came back. So on some levels, that was correct. Now, me personally, I have never been one to push that theory just based on my own desires for him to come back. Um, and I've talked about that frequently in those videos. I even uh, made it a point to mention that if Gojo comes back, to me, it's not to like save the day and be the hero. So this is in line in kind of a twisted Gege Akutami way for kind of, you know, this idea. So I think it makes sense, but stick with me here. Um, I just think that uh, the, the things that Gege was planting in so far as the symbolism and these themes, which led me to believe Gojo was coming back, I think all of those things still are true, and he is back. But the big reason for him coming back, again, which wasn't to save the day or be the hero, was to flesh out this final bit of his character development. And in that regard, I think we can still have that happen, even if Gojo himself isn't back in the flesh. Now, I know for a lot of Gojo stands out there, that's not going to be good enough. They wanted him to come back fully, live happily ever after, yada, yada, yada. That was just never where I was coming from. So to me, this is kind of a win-win um, because we're getting it in a really interesting, unexpected way. And I think we can still have those character moments that will make his story come full circle. So let me explain. So as I'm sure many of you have heard me yap about before, I believe this question boils down Gojo's character arc. Are you the strongest because you're Gojo or are you Gojo because you're the strongest? This identity crisis that he's had the entire time. And there has been this underlying theme of loneliness and strength in JJK that both Gojo and Sukuna have personified. This idea that in order to truly be strong, you have to shed your humanity and, you know, have this distance between you and others. Now, Gojo wrestled with that. He wasn't able to fully shed his humanity in the same way that Sukuna did. And in my mind that's why he not only lost the ideological battle but also the actual battle with Sukuna. He wasn't able to take it all of the way. Yet Gojo still viewed by everybody else in society was this kind of lonely at the top monster. And monster is a you know word that was thrown out a lot in this chapter via Yuta Okotsu but we're going to get to Yuta in a minute. So the point is for Gojo He's never been able to truly answer this because he wasn't able to fully shed his humanity and just go for the pinnacle of strength. But at the same time, he wasn't able to embrace his humanity either because he had this both literal and figurative infinite distance between himself and others, especially after he lost Ghetto. Now, I'm sure I know what some of you are saying, and that is, how is Gojo ever supposed to answer that question now? How can he solve that identity crisis if he can't come back? And I think he can still do that, and Gege can still show us how he does that, even if he can't come all the way back. And in fact, Gege laid the groundwork for that in this latest chapter. Because in chapter 261, Gege literally flashes us back to this very interaction. This is at the forefront of Gojo's mind, this identity crisis. And when he's thinking back on this, he actually takes the wrong thing away from it, in my opinion. Because as he says, Ghetto left him behind that day. And what he's referencing is that, you know, Ghetto had this plan to get rid of all the non-sorcerers. That is very much a plan that sheds humanity lacks humanity and empathy, right? And Gojo thinks he was the one that was left behind. So in his mind, he needs to become more of a monster, shed more of his humanity in order to defeat Sukuna. 
And part of that plan is going in and wiping out the higher ups, something he had refused to do up until this point. So again, in my opinion, Gojo took the wrong answer here. He shouldn't have shed even more of his humanity. He needed to embrace it more. And again, I believe this informs why he lost against Sukuna, because he was not able to shed all of his humanity. He wasn't able to fully become the monster, and Sukuna was. So he is going to beat other people at that game every time because he is the master of it. He is the pinnacle of it. No one embodies that way of life more than him. So if you try to emulate it and you're not going to go all the way, it's not going to be enough. And all of that is what makes this move with Yuta Okotsu so absolutely tragic. Now, it is beautiful, it is poignant, it is poetic, I am here for it, I love the character development, and I think it makes perfect sense for Okotsu's character. But it is tragic nonetheless, because he is falling into the exact same pit that his sensei did. He is trying to shed his humanity to become the monster in order to fight the monster, but that's never going to work because there is no greater monster than Sukuna. You can't beat him at his own game. And there's just so much poetry to this, right? And I know I'm already being long-winded, so I might need to make other videos like talking about more specific things here. Um, but just the whole Gojo element, right? Again, always being viewed as other from everyone else. The flower that you can admire, but you can't understand a weapon, right? And now even in death, he is still being used that way. His student, who he wanted to surpass him, is ultimately making the same mistakes. Like, it is just tragic, right? But this is where I think there is going to be room for that Gojo character development. Now, how is there going to be room for that? It could be a number of ways. I'm going to trust Gege and let him cook. But something crazy to think about is this moment right here. A precedent that was set forever ago in this manga that Gege has still not cashed in on. The fact that the host body for Kenjaku's swap technique can still interact. And who saw this happen? Gojo. So I think there is room for some development in this way, perhaps Gojo trying to prevent Akotsu from making the same mistakes he did. Now, how exactly that happens, I don't know, but there's room for it, right? And it wouldn't even have to be something like this. There's all these questions about what's going to happen after the five minutes go up. Like, I think there is just room here for Gojo to have this character development regardless of the mechanism that will satisfy his character for me and complete the comeback insofar as I have always envisioned it. And I think it would be extremely poetic for Gojo to have learned through his mistakes in death and try to prevent Akotsu from following that same path. For me, that would be Gojo realizing and accepting that who he was was incorrect. He was not happy with that idea because it was wrong. Instead, he needed to become somebody new, to go north, and that would be to reject the idea that you need to shed your humanity to become a monster, to be the strongest, but instead embrace that and be Gojo instead. And even though he couldn't fully realize that in his own life, I think it would be more poetic, more powerful if he could help his students realize that instead. And this idea has honestly been one of the through lines for the entire manga, right? Strength and the loneliness that it brings. You must shed your humanity to truly become strong. And this is not only embodied by Akotsu right now, also Hakari, another one of Gojo's students. Uruume themselves was just talking about how sorcerers try too hard to retain their humanity and that's why they're weak. And she recognizes that Hakari is unlike them. So both Hakari and Yuta Akotsu have kind of chosen the wrong path just like Gojo did. But Gojo has another student that isn't going to make this mistake. Yuji is our MC after all. So those of you that are worried that Akotsu is going to take the spotlight, he's not. Because again, he is embracing the wrong path and he is going to ultimately fail. Yuji will be the one to teach Sukuna what love is. And that's because Yuji's strength will ultimately beat him. A strength that is selfless and focuses on helping others. Just like in the first chapter of this manga, the mission put upon him by his grandfather. And I've actually put out a longer video waxing poetic on the whole, the one to teach Sukuna about love is. So check that out if you want a more nuanced breakdown. But yeah, I just think there is so much awesomeness happening right now that I am so excited to see where Ge uh, Gege goes with this but ultimately it's going to be our boy that puts him down and I think all of these developments are just making that sweeter and sweeter.
Anyways, I'm still marinating on these things, so I might be able to better articulate my ideas in the future, but I wanted to go ahead and share this reaction just to help any of you untangle your ideas about this chapter because I really enjoyed it. So let me know your thoughts and thank you for watching.